Welcome back to our intermediate financial accounting class. Over the last few segments, we've been talking about EPS, what it is, why it's important, how we calculate it, and then the big difference between basic EPS and diluted EPS. We went through all the calculations for the numbers involved with both of those calculations and also started talking about the dilutive securities that are part of that diluted EPS calculation. Once we've done the calculation, we started looking at the securities themselves. And we've done examples now of converting preferred stock, converting bonds, and then recording equity options that we give to our employees. What we want to look at now is liability options that we give to our employees. Now, unfortunately, because of time, we're limiting our discussion of stock options, warrants, and contingencies to just employee stock options. There's other kinds out there. But we can't have all the fun in intermediate. We have to leave topics for CPE review, CP exam, CPA exam study, and of course, for future accounting classes. So we have had to limit ourselves a little bit, but that's okay because we're having a lot of fun with the journal entries we are getting to make. And perhaps the most fun set are these liability options that we're about to talk about. As a quick reminder before we jump into the calculations, remember that equity options that we talked about in our last couple of segments are only used by the employee to buy the shares of stock. I give you the option, you have to come in, bring me the option and pay the strike price and get the share of stock. And then if you want, you can keep the stock and become an owner, or you can sell the stock and make a profit based on that intrinsic value. I sell it to you for 10, you then sell it for 15 and you make $5 profit. And the primary goal of those equity options is to get our employees to become owners. We assume that if they go to the trouble of buying the stock, they'll keep at least some of it and become owners. A liability option is different. We're assuming that they just want the compensation. They want that $5 intrinsic value. So we offer it to them. Instead of saying you have to come in and buy it at $10 a share, and then you go sell it yourself and make $5 profit, we'll just give you the $5 profit. And that's what a liability option is. And because we're offering to pay them that value, we do the journal entries very differently than the ones we do for equity options. Under liability options, we start by calculating the fair value every period of these options. Now, we're using fair value, not intrinsic value, because all I'm doing at this point is guessing what I think they're going to get out of these options eventually. So this is my best guess on what it's going to cost me when they come in and ask for the profit or the value of these options. And that fair value, again, either comes from the stock market or it comes from the Black-Scholes model. So I figure that out every single period with the Black-Scholes model or market prices. And I take that fair value and I make that my desired ending balance for what we call the SARS liability, stock appreciation rights liability. Once I know what the desired ending balance is, then in step three, I can figure out a journal entry that gets me from the current balance to the desired balance and I make that debit or credit to the SARS liability, and the flip side of the entry is compensation expense. So if I have to increase the liability with a credit, then I increase compensation expense. If I get to decrease the liability, because that market value has gone down, then I get to decrease the current year's compensation expense. And I'll do those first three steps every period while the options vest, and then I'll keep going until they exercise the option. When they do decide to exercise the option, I need to change my SARS liability count from fair value to intrinsic value. Again, that's that market value minus the stock price. So the example we've been looking at was a strike price of 10 and a market value of 15. So the intrinsic value is that $5. So I would get my SARS liability to that $5 per share amount. Then once I've done that journal entry, then I close my SARS liability for that employee. I debit away the liability and I credit them whatever I'm giving them. Typically they want the cash, so I debit the SARS liability, I credit cash. Sometimes they'll want shares of stock, so I debit the SARS liability and I give them stock, common stock additional payment capital. Now they can also use these options to buy shares of stock at the intrinsic value. They can do that if they don't want us to give them the value as of this day when they exercise them. If that happens, we debit the cash they give us for the strike price, we debit away the SARS liability, we credit common stock and additional paid in capital. It's just like what we did for equity options when they're exercised, except instead of using additional paid in capital stock options outstanding, I use SARS liability. 
other than that, it's exactly the same. Here's our example. Again, this is Fountains Incorporated. They've got that $3 par value common stock, but instead of Alice, we now have Sally. Sally also received a thousand options, but she's a member of the senior management team. So her options can either be used to purchase common stock or can be redeemed for their intrinsic value. That's what makes them liability options. They can be redeemed for that intrinsic value. On the date of the grant, market price was $8. So it was the same day as Alice's stock was issued. So we have that same market price, but because she's management, she can do more to improve stock price. So as part of giving her an incentive, we raise the exercise or strike price to 10 bucks each. Also because she's management, she's got a little bit better deal. She only has to work for two years before she can use the options. So the vesting period or service period is much shorter. The options will still expire over five years. So unlike Alice who worked for four years and then had one year to use them, Sally has two years to earn them and then she's got three years to use them. And this is a pretty common incentive with management. I've given them a higher exercise price to get them to work to raise the value of the company. So I give them longer to use the option so that that incentive stays in place longer. The more time you have available, the better your chances of getting the market value up way above the $10 per share and you make even more profit. The option pricing model, usually black shoals, but there are others, determines that the fair value of the options was $3 each on the grant day, $1.50 at the end of year one, $4 at the end of year two, a dollar at the end of year three to 50 on March 31st of year four when she chose to exercise the options. And the stock price on March 31st was $12 per share. Unlike Alice, where we made a journal entry on the grant date for the fair value on that day, we don't make any entry at all until we get to the adjusting entries at the end of the first year. So this original $3 fair value is irrelevant. We're not going to use it at all. I don't care. I'm only going to adjust the SARS liability at the end of each fiscal period. So I'm concerned with that $1.50. Step number one then is to estimate the total fair value. And to do that, I take the number of options times the fair value times the percent earned. Let's see. Sally got a thousand options. Fair value at the end of the period is $1.50. And she has earned 50% of these options. This is one out of the two years of the vesting period. So that's my 50%, which gives us a fair value at the end of this year of $750. And that's step one. Step two is over here with my T account. I want the ending balance of my liability to be this $750. So I'm going to put that right here to get from zero to 750. I need a credit of 750. And that's what I'm looking for in step two. Step three. Now that I know what I need in the SARS liability, I can make my journal entry the best part. So we're going to credit the SARS liability. 750 and debit compensation expense, 750. This is the change in fair value of SARS liability. Or if you prefer, you can say it's the change in fair value of liability options, either way. So the next time we're gonna even look at these options is the end of the next fiscal period. So that will be at the end of year two, when the options are now worth $4 each. That's the market value, either again from the stock market or from this Black Shoals model. Now, instead of me walking through this, I want you to give this a try, do the journal entries and the calculations. When we come back, we'll check your work and then we'll move on and look at what happens when she exercises the options. We'll see you then. Thanks.